The derivative measures the rate of change of a function, i.e. change in input over change in output. In fact, the notation df dx is intended to invoke the idea of this ratio. If we think of delta f as meaning change in f and delta x as meaning change in x, then the derivative is the ratio delta f over delta x and the limit where the change in input, delta x, is small. If we have a function f of x and we are told that df dx is positive everywhere, what do we know about the function? We know that whenever we increase the input x, the output f of x must also increase. We call such an f an increasing function, or even monotone increasing, to indicate it always increases. The graph of such an f might look like this. Conversely, if we are told that df dx is negative everywhere, then we know that the output, f of x, must always decrease when x increases. We call such an f a decreasing function, or even monotone decreasing. The graph of a monotone decreasing function might look like this. Of course, a function could have more complicated behavior than a monotone increasing or decreasing function. The function might increase in some places and decrease in others. The function graphed here increases for x less than negative 3, but then at x equals negative 3, it turns around and starts decreasing. It decreases over the interval negative 3 less than x less than 1, then turns around again at x equals 1, and increases from then on. It's easy to see where the function increases, decreases, and changes direction from the graph. But how do we determine these features of a function without a graph? In fact, we'll often want to go the reverse direction. Use information about the derivative of a function to determine its behavior so that we can graph it. We'll accomplish this task by focusing on where the function f of x can change direction, i.e., where the derivative can change sign. If the derivative is changing continuously, then the only way for it to change sign is if it crosses through zero. If the derivative f prime of x equals zero at some point x equals a, then it's possible that f prime of x has a different sign for x less than a than for x greater than a. For example, the function f of x equals x minus one squared with derivative f prime of x equals two times x minus one has a zero derivative at x equals one. In this case, the derivative f prime of x is less than zero for x less than one, and f prime of x is greater than zero for x greater than one. The graph of f looks like this, and we can see that it decreases until x equals one and increases after that. Just because the derivative is zero doesn't mean the function has to change sign. For example, the function f of x equals x minus one cubed with derivative f prime of x equals three times x minus one squared has a zero derivative at x equals one. However, f prime of x is positive for both x less than one and x greater than one. Away from x equals one, the function f of x is always increasing as we can see from its graph. A zero derivative isn't the only way the derivative could change sign. If the derivative of f does not exist at a point x equals a, i.e. if the function f is not differentiable at x equals a, then the derivative might also change sign at x equals a. For example, for the function f of x equals the absolute value of x minus one, the derivative f prime of x equals one for x greater than one, and f prime of x equals negative one for x less than one. At the point x equals one, where the derivative changes sign, the derivative does not exist. The function f of x, whose graph looks like this, is not differentiable at x equals one. 
Of course, one could imagine a different function whose graph looks like this. The derivative doesn't exist at x equals 1, but the derivative is positive for all x not equal to 1. If a function f of x is defined at the point x equals a, but either 1, the derivative f prime of a is 0, or 2, the function is not differentiable at x equals a, then the point x equals a is called a critical point of f. If a function is defined everywhere, then the only points where its derivative can change sign are critical points. Besides at critical points, the derivative could also change sign at points where the function itself is not defined. For example, the function f of x equals 1 divided by x minus 1 squared is not defined at x equals 1. For x not equal to 1, its derivative is f prime of x equals negative 2 divided by x minus 1 cubed. The derivative changes sign at x equals 1. For x less than 1, f prime of x is greater than 0. And for x greater than 1, f prime of x is less than 0. However, since f of x is not defined at x equals 1, the point x equals 1 is not considered a critical point. In summary, the derivative can change sign at critical points. Points x equals a, where f of a is defined, but either f prime of a equals 0, or f prime of a doesn't exist, or at points where f of a is not defined. Since the derivative can change sign only at critical points, and points where f isn't defined, there's a simple way to find the intervals where f increases and decreases. 1. Find all critical points, or points where f of x doesn't exist. 2. These points divide the number line into intervals. One interval to the left of all the points, one interval to the right of all points, and an interval between each pair of consecutive points. Pick a convenient point to represent that interval. We could call these points auxiliary points. The auxiliary points can be any point on each interval, but they cannot coincide with a critical point or a point where f of x doesn't exist. 3. Calculate the derivative at each auxiliary point. 4. If f prime is positive at an auxiliary point, it is positive everywhere on the corresponding interval since f prime cannot change sign on the interval. We can conclude that f is increasing on the interval. 5. If f prime is negative at an auxiliary point, it is negative everywhere on the corresponding interval. We can conclude that f is decreasing on that interval. Using this procedure, we can determine where a function f of x is increasing, where it is decreasing, and where it changes direction. The result is that we have fundamental information on the behavior of the function. We can use this information, for example, to sketch the graph of a function. For example, that f of x equals negative 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 36x minus 5. This function is defined for all x. To find the intervals where it is increasing and decreasing, we look for the critical points. The derivative of f is df dx equals negative 6x squared minus 6x plus 36. The derivative exists everywhere, so the only critical points are where df dx equals 0. We can solve for the critical points by using the quadratic formula or by factoring. It turns out that this equation is easily solved by factoring. We can factor out a negative 6, obtaining negative 6 times the quantity x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. Factoring the quadratic gives negative 6 times x plus 3 times x minus 2 equals 0. The critical points are x equals negative 3 and x equals 2. You can double check that df dx evaluated at x equals negative 3 is 0 and df dx evaluated at x equals 2 is 0.
the two critical points divide the real line into three intervals, negative infinity to negative three, negative three to two, and two to negative infinity. We need to pick an auxiliary point from each interval to see if f is increasing or decreasing in that interval. For the interval negative infinity to three, let's pick the point x equals negative four. Since df dx evaluated at x equals negative four equals negative six times negative four squared minus six times negative four plus 36, which equals negative 36, which is less than zero, the function is decreasing in the interval negative infinity to negative three. For the interval negative three to two, let's pick the point x equals zero. Since df dx evaluated at x equals zero is negative six times zero squared minus six times zero plus 36, which is 36, which is greater than zero, the function is increasing in the interval negative three to two. For the interval two to infinity, let's pick the point x equals four. Since df dx evaluated at x equals four is negative six times four squared minus six times four plus 36, which is equal to negative 84, which is less than zero, the function is decreasing in the interval two to infinity. Using just this information about the derivative, we can already sketch the basic form of the function. It should decrease until x equals negative three, turn around and increase until x equals two, then decrease from then on. Of course, we don't know exactly what it looks like from just the sign of the derivative, and without evaluating the function itself for at least one point, we cannot pin down its vertical location. But just from the intervals where the function increases and decreases, we can get a rough idea of the function's behavior.